Welcome to the Edge Telco Cloud session. Remind you that you can send your questions through the chat today. Today, we're delighted to count with the participation of two renowned experts of Edge Telco Cloud. David Artuñedo Guillén, Senior Manager at Telefonica IMSD, the research and development arm of the Telco giant, and Frances Gim, Principal Engineer and Chief of Edge Systems Architecture at Intel. Sure that most of you know who Intel is. No need to further. This session is made in collaboration with the 6G Sandbox project, a need you sponsor project where we have built a test bed for advanced mobile radio that is open for organizations to test their solutions. Back in 2015-16, three major tier one operators, AT&T, Deutsche Telekom and Telefonica took advantage of the ETSI's NFB specification. Furthermore, utilize the Open Network is Foundation software defined networking the control and data plane separation would really open the until that time black box approach of the telco equipment manufacturers and leveraging on the open compute projects, open infrastructure specifications for the OEMs. Solve the network driven use cases such as the passive optic access network virtualizations and with a clear objective of moving that into the run and waiting till the 5G mobile network disaggregation came around. But the available x86 processing capabilities were not enough to handle the traffic management requirements to, and to overcome these limitations, Intel developed the enhanced platform awareness, which represents a methodology targeting intelligent platform capabilities, configuration, and capacity consumption. EPA delivers improved and deterministic application performance and input-output input, input throughput. The implementation of the edge platform awareness features in Open Nebula enable the fine grained matching of process capabilities to virtual machines and Kubernetes workloads prior to launching these applications. The implementation of EPA allows Open Nebula to improve the VM packet forwarding performance throughput, latency, and jitter, exposing low level CPU and NIC acceleration components to the virtual, virtualized network functions. We take advantage of host CPU, uh, future request, SROV and PCI pass through, huge pages support, NUMA awareness, IO based NUMA scheduling, TPU pinning, CPU threading policies, OVS DPK, GPU hardware support, bare metal autom uh, automation provisioning, and multi clustering deployment. Here you see how OpenEvila facilitates the required 5G components disaggregation together with MEC. On the left hand stack, we host all the 5G core and, and radio functions. And you can uh, clearly see how we utilize uh, the micro edge and data, data center. And on the right hand stack, we have third party applications that host uh, video surveillance, University of Malaga. Um, virtual campuses, and all this is being in production at the University of Malaga. Open Nebula is the lightweight platform needed for the telco cloud enablement of network function virtualization and software defined networks. Here for the fixed access network, Open Nebula is extensively utilized not only to host the, the network functions such as routers, uh, home equipment, all the switching, but also third party services that are heavy on heavy workloads, such as CDNs, uh, connections to the core for, vo for voice over IP, IPv6, IPv4. All this was virtualized uh, using COTS infrastructure. And that's how we, um, how we host the fixed access network. Thank you very much. Now I give the floor to David Arpineto from Telefonica. Thank you, Alfonso. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is David Arpineto. I'm working in the innovation team in Telefonica. And I'm going to be talking today about uh, two use cases of uh, different NFBs and, and uh, CNFs that uh, we've been using in the fixed access and, and, fixed access and mobile access technologies uh, in, in Telefonica. 
when talking about uh, NFBs and uh, and uh, telco, cl telco clouds um, at the edge, uh, the first uh, the first thing is to try to illustrate um, what are we talking about? What, what is this telco edge? Right. So in the innovation team, we've always uh, have been focused on the, on putting the servers as close to the access network as possible. And uh, this means collocated with the with the access equipment, the OLTs in the in the case of uh, fiber access, or the uh, G node Bs or E node Bs in the case of uh, mobile networks, so that we can put our um, services uh, or network functions very very close to the to the access network, which means very close to to our customers. Okay, this is a control environment that the telco have. And um, and this is where we we test our solutions. The first exercise that we did was with the the fixed access, the, the fiber access. Uh, so telcos we use the the OLTs, uh, on la, uh, optic line termination equipment to connect the fiber from the customers, and when we want to put um, uh, telco NFPs or um, Telco clouds connected to these type of devices. We think of a rack of servers that uh, we connect directly to these OLTs, and we can deploy our our functions over there. So, in the case of fiber customers, uh, we tested with a virtual CTE appliance. This means a, a virtual router that is able to manage the traffic coming from the customers. So, the customers have the the fiber routers at home, uh, and they're sending traffic to the to the central offices. So the first thing that we need to do uh, to deploy this virtual CP appliance is to have one solution that manages this this uh, data center. In our case, we're using uh, one edge from from Open Nebula. This let us manage all the servers that we deploy there, and then in these uh, servers we can create virtual machines. These virtual machines will contain the virtual CP applications. We install the virtual CP software inside this virtual machine. And this way, this virtual CPE can handle the traffic for one customer that is connected uh, to the file. Okay? But in an OLT, uh, we can have uh, around 3,000 customers. So we need to replicate this uh, this infrastructure to support many, many customers in this, in this server. So we will have tens or hundreds of virtual machines um, uh, running virtual CPE uh, appliances to handle the, the traffic from, from this customer. So how does the, the servers handle this traffic load when we have so many virtual machines? Because we have we are in, in an oversubscription uh, situation. We have more virtual machines than, than threads in the in the uh, in the CPUs. Well, for this, we've been doing uh, different experiments and testing different technologies. Um, the first scenario we tested with uh, two VMs per thread in the, in the course. You know that these servers can have uh, two CPUs with multiple cores. We can have up to 80 cores or something like that. So we oversubscribed, uh, we put two VMs per thread. And uh, when we were increasing the traffic, we saw that the number of interruptions were increasing as well. Okay, so you can see the, the figure there. The more traffic you put in the server, the higher number of interruptions you get um, in the system. If we increase the oversubscription, we double the oversubscription to 40 ms then uh, of course the number of interruptions also increases, and you see that uh, the system is getting more loaded uh, as traffic increases as well. This gives you a perception that if we continue increasing the, the oversubscription, there will be a, a point of saturation in terms of how many interrupts the system can handle. So we decided to test a different technology. In this case, uh, we tested the data plane um, development kit. This is a technology uh, initially developed by Intel, then it became open source. Basically, this technology, what it does is it replaces the interruption model by some polling running in, in some threads in the in the CPU. So these threads are constantly polling the NIC interfaces to retrieve the packets. 
Therefore, the number of interactions goes significantly lower. So when we use the DPDK, you can see the comparison here. We see that at the beginning, the number of interactions is much more contained in both cases with 2 VMs and, and 4 VMs until there is a point where the system uh, somehow gets uh, degraded significantly um, by increasing the track. Okay. So this illustrates that uh, there are different options, there are different technologies that you can use when handling uh, high traffic in servers. And depending on the, the usage of your application, you can decide to go uh, with, with a specific technology. In the case of mobile access, um, we also wanted to connect um, 5G and base stations, uh, the G node Bs, to a mobile core running also at the edge. And in order to do that, again, uh, we put the servers very, very close to the GNOT Bs in some central office where the fiber from the GNOT Bs are, are connected. Again, for managing these servers, we need a um, management system. In this case, we're also using Monage. But the mobile core that we wanted to deploy is uh, not running in, in VMs, but in containers. So we have to deploy um, one Kubernetes uh, solution, the one KE, KE sorry, um, the Kubernetes solution that comes with the Nebula to deploy our, our mobile core. The mobile core that we're using for testing is the Open5GS. It's an open solution that uh, you can deploy in, in Kubernetes and on KAI. And uh, specifically, the two, um, the two entities for the mobile core that are relevant for this integration is the Access Mobility Management Faction and the User Payment Faction. The Access Mobility Management Faction is the one responsible for uh, connecting the, the GNOME Bs and managing the attachment of the, of the devices and the user claim function is the one that gets the traffic from the devices once they are attached to the mobile core. So in order to connect these uh, antennas to the, to the mobile core, we have to set up two interfaces, the N2 and N3 interfaces. But when you look at the, the protocol stack of the N2 interface, we see that there is a the physical layer, the radio interface. Then we have the IP layer and uh, we have an SCTP protocol. And this is not uh, HTTP based and um, by default is not supported by the CNIs that comes with uh, standard Kubernetes. So if you want to make this work, you want to connect this type of, um, of equipment to a mobile core running at the edge, and what we have to do is to adjust the CNA. In this case, we replace the, the standard CNA with uh, Multus, which is a, a soft, uh, um, an evolution, a sophisticated CNA, let's say, um, that supports multiple connection, it supports um, having multiple interfaces connected to, to the Kubernetes, and it also supports non-HTTP uh, protocols like SCTP that we have um, in, in this case. This way we were able to connect this uh, genome piece to the mobile core one of each. These are two examples uh, of uh, use cases that we've been uh, testing in the innovation team. Um, when using this type of technology, SEPA, NUMA, um, the TPDK to make sure that we, we get the most efficient traffic management uh, from the NIC interfaces. You need to, to play with these technologies, but also consider also uh, all other uh, technologies like uh, DPDK in our case or PCI pass through, et cetera, that can help uh, your, your application to perform better. And when talking about Kubernetes, again, for, for cloud, for telco cloud, uh, you need to consider replacing the CNI um, to support additional protocols and additional connectivity uh, scenarios more elaborated than the ones supported by the standard uh, CNI that comes with Kubernetes, as Multus or others that are now available in the market. This concludes my 
um, my session today and I give the word now to Tesk to learn about uh, what's coming next from, from Intel. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. That was a great presentation. Now we give the floor to Francisco Kim from Intel. Okay, thank you very much, uh, David and, and Alfonso for the introduction. I'll, I'll, co I'll continue uh, following the lines of what uh, uh, David has presented uh, and now switching a little bit of, uh, gears of what uh, we are doing from Intel perspective, uh, continuing a, a little bit along those lines of managing uh, the resources in an efficient manner. So I'm gonna touch on two different areas of, of work that we are uh, focused today, but they are uh, intrinsically related to what uh, the, the, the we just presented. The, the, the first area, it's, it's, um, it's along what we call uh, consolidation or common framework, right? So um, David was uh, talking about uh, PON, about uh, connectivity, about the services themselves, and something that is clear uh, as the uh, edge, edge to cloud deployments become more mature and, and, uh, and uh, reality is that we have to have uh, systems that they are end-to-end -end, uh, designed and that they can cope with different use cases than in the, that come from potentially uh, collocating network functions with uh, video analytics to perform uh, defect detection in a manufacturing facility. You can have deployment models that, uh, that, co that may coexist network functions more at the far of the edge to provide B2X connectivity, but as well, the traffic goes into the into the data center to do a second level of processing. So that implies uh, that implies that you have to look at the system from a, a, a coherent horizontal manner. So I'm not going to get into this uh, eye chart, but basically one of the um, things that are happening more and more is, is that from uh, ecosystem perspective and technology perspective uh, from Intel as well, is that there are lots of different building blocks that you can incorporate as part of your system design, depending on the deployment models and the use cases and the requirements. So one of the things that we're heavily focusing as, as, as we speak is basically how we can understand uh, how different deployment models and requirements can be translated in which of those building blocks uh, do you need, right? So David uh, was talking about the potentially DPDK or EPA for uh, network functions, but maybe if now you combine that with um, with a real-time deployment model for uh, for manufacturing, maybe you will need some level of, of real-time support uh, from TSM, for example. So I think that from ecosystem and technology perspective, it's very important that we can of make ease of use of all these different technologies in abstracted manner. So the, the, the first area that we are working on is, is try to see how we can encapsulate those different uh, technologies in a more simple APIs in the different parts of the system architecture, starting from the libraries to resource to Kubernetes to the hardware underneath. The second important aspect is, okay, now you have uh, uh, the, all the components selected is understanding in reality how the systems are, are behaving end to end, right? And, and, and the, the bit, uh showed a, a, a great example of the work that has been conducted uh, to understand the, the different interfaces, the flows and the performance that you get out of it. And you need to understand uh, as well on the quality of service, right? And, and here, what I wanted to, to connect uh, a, a little bit with the previous slide and, and, and the use cases that David showed is um, that depending on, on how you carefully select the, the different parts of the hardware and the software to enable an end-to-end -end, uh, path in terms of, quality, of uh, resource allocation, you can have a complete uh, different per, uh, performance results, right? So here, a very simple example, uh, and by the way, this connects into using, for example, DPDK plus SRIOB to do the network management or mapping the queues into the network car, or maybe do CPU pinning and memory pinning for the compute of the services. And that basically is going to change drastically the performance that you experience. So here you can see a very uh, simple example where we are conducting an end-to-end -end, um, performance analysis where you want to emulate a, a deployment model. Like in this case, we are not uh, showing network functions, but it, it could be easily extrapolated or well, not extrapolated, but included as part of the of the testing. But you have a, a, a server that has um, different uh, use cases 
three of them are retail and the other one is content delivery. And then what you do is you emulate the traffic into another uh, two and two edge nodes that basically are injecting traffic into this into these use cases. Now here um, on this graph, without getting into um, into details on on how the experiments were conducted, but basically what we are showing is uh, what happens if, in this case, you just uh, um, when when you just um, uh, do throw the, the the four services into the platform without doing any sort of compute pinning in terms of resources and no networking pinning. And as you can see, and we compare that with the per peak performance that the that the services could get in provided the hardware, right? Which has been performed in another benchmarking analysis. But basically what you can see here is that without uh, the compute and, and memory pinning on the resources to the to the services, you get a, a degradation of 63% on the on in this case we are monitoring the the retail application whereas if now you say okay i'm going to do um uh, uh, compute uh, resource pinning uh for this uh for all the different services running into the platform now you go from a per but in this case you don't do any networking uh, uh pinning into the into the applications now you get a reduction from 63 percent of uh, of um, of penalty at down to 38 percent of penalty. Okay, this this body is is uh, the 50, 50th percentile, 75 um, uh, for the and for frames per second and, and latency. Now, if you say okay, and now I'm gonna do like I'm gonna do performance uh, like resource allocation for compute perspective, but I'm not gonna do any networking. Uh, what is the implication here? So now you're dropping like from 40% up uh, down to 4% of performance uh, penalty by, by doing this collocation, right? So the, the compute allocation is, is very relevant. Now the latest one, which is, okay, I'm doing a smart uh, resource and networking mapping end-to-end -end for each of these applications. Now even what happens is that you get a performance imp imp improvement because now you are kind of really allocating for a content delivery uh, use case that is more IO and, and network oriented. You provide the, 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 re the right level of, of resources from networking perspective using SRIOB, uh, ADQ and other networking uh, cap capabilities that Intel provides. And you do the CPU pinning as well to the, the video analytics application. So what happens is that you have even perform uh, better performance uh, with respect on the on the original deployment model where you were testing just only retail application on one node or CDN application on one node. So basically this uh, connected into uh, what uh, David said, uh, the, like all these different uh, capabilities that we provide uh, in, in the in the roadmap connected to the software capabilities, it's it's very key in order to to get an end-to-end -end, uh, performance capabilities uh, for your deployments. Now, the the second area, and I know I'm flashing a little bit quick here, but I, I thought it was interesting to kind of uh, look at, the, at this from from the from the different areas of work. Now you have to connect that in a distributed cloud, right? So you have. Um, uh, multiple edge locations, and now you have to uh, do these two levels of, of, of uh, resource orchestration. And that means that what I just talked about before that is looked at uh, from a single node perspective, now you, can, you have to have something on top of it that is monitoring all the different uh, uh, services and edge locations. And here, obviously, looking at the end-to-end -end, uh, quality of service. This connects me into my second and last part of the of the of the talk, which basically, okay, now we're coming from five six years ago where we were doing POCs into now that we have to deploy um, applications at uh, <coughs> at thousands of, of edge deployments. Now, what does it mean, right? So we we need to look at this problem connected to the to the uh, area one that I just talked about. It's on how to implement uh, uh, scalability and elasticity at at the um, at the at this uh, at the scale that we're talking about, and and then more more important is how we manage energy and and the resources uh, to to minimize the 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 cost and the impact into the into the in, in, into the overall infrastructure. And in the second area of, of work, um, we are looking, obviously, as I was tell, uh, just talking about, you have to have 
uh, something on the top, a federated architecture that basically tries to optimize uh, the energy and compute problem at, at the scale. And now what you need to have is uh, we need to optimize the applications and and to be more effective in terms of, of energy and how you have tools like Granulate that basically optimize the, the knobs uh, on the platform that they run and where you can get uh, up to maybe 20 or 30% of optimizations. Now we may be have uh, we may have new implementations on network functions or even like use cases that are uh, optimized or take benefits of the uh, Intel features like SST from the compute perspective. And now, more important, we need to adapt as well the orchestration layers on the on the on the bottom of a system that basically allows uh, to manage applications, but being very aware on on the energy consumption and resource consumption and quality of service for the applications, and work with the upper layers to uh, be able to do this co-scheduling uh, from local and 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 distributed perspective. And last but not least, obviously. <clears throat> it's very important that we connect that with the um, silicon that, that we are developing and looking at the new generation of CPUs that they provide uh, new features for power shaving and monitoring, uh, look at things like IPU to manage and monitor the, the systems, and some concept that we are looking into is how to use AI to optimize the, the systems local and distributed. And Obviously, always that comes with uh, uh, enhancement at the at the system level, and include new topics such as uh, new uh, technology, cooling technologies, hybrid uh, like precision cooling, immersion cooling, and how we connect that with things like our, as like the renewable energies that change completely sometimes how you you would do the the orchestration. So that was a, li a little bit of of, of fast but high level. Uh, discussion on on what we are looking into from Intel perspective and system architecture, and hopefully connected us as, as well on potential next steps that, that can be done in the context of Open Nebula and the Telefonica projects that David talked about. So thank you very much, and I hope to to get uh, questions from you. Thank you very much, both. Uh, thank you very much for attending the session. Now we're going to answer some of the questions. <laughs>